If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we're going to do is start from point A and move our way in this direction to point B. And as we do that, we want to keep track of the potential changes. So for example, when we encounter this battery right here, we would be moving from the negative to the positive terminal of that battery. And in that case, we would have a positive potential change equal to 24 volts. We then continue our way along the path and we would be moving with the current marked with I1. Whenever we move with current, that represents a negative potential change. Furthermore, when we go through a resistor, the potential change is equal to the current times the resistance. We can see the current is marked as I1, and then we would multiply it by the resistance of 6 ohms. And then we would continue our journey and end at point B. Now, what we'll do is again go from point A to point B, but this time we'll follow a path that goes down the circuit in this fashion, again keeping track of potential changes. Now, the only circuit element we encounter is this resistor marked with 3 ohms. We're moving again with the current, so that would represent a negative potential change. And then we would multiply the current of I2 times the resistance of 3 ohms. And the key idea is that the potential change along the red path is equal to the potential change along the blue path. So we can actually set these two potential changes equal to one another. The value of I1 was given in the question as 3 amps, so we can plug that in. Then on the left side we have 24 minus 18, which of course is 6. On the right side we essentially have negative 3 times I2. So then when we divide both sides of the equation by negative 3, we can see that I2 turns out to have a current of negative 2 amps. Now technically you can't really have a current that is negative. And so what that means is that the direction of the current given in the question was actually the wrong direction, which is kind of strange because that's the way it was drawn for us. So what we actually need to do is take the direction of I2 and turn it around. And when we do that, we can then change the sign from negative to positive. So note the change in the direction of the current marked I2, and then here would be the final value of that current. Now, in order to solve for the current labeled I3, we can apply Kirchhoff's junction rule, and we can do that at either junction A or junction B. Let's go over to junction A and see how to apply that rule. And that rule states that the total current going into the junction is equal to the total current going out. Well, again, looking at junction A, we can see that the current marked I3, if we kind of follow it along, is moving in to that junction. Also, current 2, since we switched its direction, is moving in to that junction. Current 1, however, if we kind of follow it backwards a little bit, we can see that it is flowing out of that junction. And so, in the equation, we'll take the two currents that are flowing into the junction, I3 and I2, and we'll add them together, and then we'll set that equal to the one current that's flowing out of the junction, which was I1. And then we can solve this equation for I3 by subtracting I2. And then since we know the values of both I1 and I2, we can just plug them in. So we'll plug in 3 amps for I1, 2 amps for I2, and then we can see that the current marked I3 is equal to 1 amp. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.